Now we're going to get a little bit more into the, the nitty-gritty and look at really the, some of the changes that occur uh, when implants are placed. When you put an implant in, in most instances, it's uh, underneath the tissue. But once it becomes exposed, the bone begins to change. and They have this biologic width that, that, uh, that forms. When the biologic width forms at tissue placement, the bone is right at the connection where the, the abutment is and where the implant begins. But over a, a short period of time, changes occur and this biologic width occurs and the bone drops down, usually to the first thread of the implant. Now these are for two-stage implants, implants that are underneath the gingiva and the connection is underneath the gingiva. You see this. So when you look at an x-ray and you see that the bone isn't all the way to the top, it's supposed to be that way down to the first thread. So that really comes into a big uh, part of evaluating for implant health is where that bone level is. So the implant goes in and then you see the bone to the first thread. And they know that this is an issue, so they're tweaking the design to some extent to see if they can maintain that bone better. So you have implants that have removed that connection from instead of at the bone level above the bone and tissue level. But you can't usually use these implants in aesthetic areas because you'll have a chance of the collar showing. So these implants work really good if it's underneath a denture or underneath a partial or in the mandibular maxillary posterior where you can't see that little connection line which we've all seen, not only on Crown and Bridge, but on, on implant restorations too. Now, what that becomes even more important is in the maxillary anterior, where you may lose a little bone, you also will lose a little tissue that goes with it. So you put the implants in, they look good, you put the crowns on, and then the bone recedes, and you get this, the black tissue or black triangle effect. So that is caused by two implants next to each other, and the bone change that forms around it. Some of the newer designs have tried to move that connection point between the implant and the abutment inward, like this in this example. See how it doesn't come right over, all the way to the edge? It's more towards the center. So in that way, more of the bone is maintained, and you don't get that black triangle effect, although there's a little teeny spot there in, in, that, in that image. So that bone loss phenomena, the biologic width phenomena, may not matter in the posterior, but in the anterior, if you want someone that's very critical, it's like that. When someone buys a new car, they don't want to scratch on it. And you, when you have a, a situation like this, they get brand new crowns. Even people that had poor situation beforehand will say, hey, what's this that, that occurred? So really what it comes down to is we, we talk about an implant is an attached pontic. So the implant itself is important, of course, but how you make the pontic look is much more, much more critical. So what we're going to talk about for a while is not as much for the implants, but is how we can develop a good pontic site, which is something I really like to do after, after the surgeries. I think I spend as much time messing around with the flipper or the temporary to make the tissue look right and have this pontic site develop properly. So you have a tooth. Kathy will remember this one well. We have a tooth. We had that fractured number eight. That lady had a, 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 a uh, high smile line. It's, we have to make it look as good as possible. Not that you wouldn't try anyway, but someone that shows everything when they smile, it, it's, it's very important. First thing you have to do is you've got to take out the tooth non-traumatically. No more just pulling the tooth out and pulling the buckle plate with it. You have to make it very careful extraction technique. Go around the tooth very carefully. Luxate it very temporarily try to extract the tooth vertically. You know, it used to be in the old days when, when you'd be in an oral surgery clinic, they say, I've never, the oral surgeon said, I've never pulled a tooth in my life. You wiggle it, you rotate it, you luxate it and, it, and it comes out. Well, that's, nowadays, you're pulling teeth. You're trying to get the tooth to come out vertically as possible. You don't want to stretch or hurt or damage the bone in any way. I won't get into it in detail, but there, there are different techniques and different ways now to take that tooth out vertically without any changes to the bone around it or minimal changes to the bone around it. You would hate to, to do a big flap. This, oh, here we go back. You would hate to, to do a big flap and possibly have this bone break or have loss of tissue. So after the tooth is taken out, a really fine temporary is put in place with an ovoid pontic. 
where it goes underneath the gingival tissue. You actually stick the acrylic underneath the gingiva in this instance. So this goes up about two or three millimeters underneath the gum in that. So when it heals months later, it has a look like this. It has that very round, it, you can almost see the tooth where it's gonna be at, at the end. The tooth is gonna emerge right from that spot. So I put the implant in, which actually was the easy part to put the implant in. It went right down the middle, right in that spot. I knew exactly how to, how to, to place it and how to put it in the area. And then when the crown is uncovered and when the crown is done, and matter of fact, it, it even looks a little better than the tooth adjacent to it. The gingiva maintains itself very well. So we went from a patient that was high risk with a broken tooth. In a six month process, we were able to develop that pontic site and put the implant in. So, uh, even though you got a preview of this slide earlier, you, you have one pontic site that you develop. So you can put in one tooth. You can just take that same philosophy to the next level from one tooth to two. Those two middle teeth or two middle crowns are, are implants. It's a crown on a natural tooth, crown on a natural tooth. So it's basically attached pontics. You go from one to two to using the, the same idea to help anchor, these are anchored pontics, to help anchor a partial denture using this little attachment. And so instead of having the clasp go right across this crown tooth and potentially weaken it, we've all seen the, the, the domino effect where you, you, you clasp a bicuspid, it's there, you have a distal extension partial, it wiggles it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and eventually you lose that tooth. Then you, put it on the one farther forward, years later, wiggle, 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 you lose it. So in this instance, the implant takes the force. But still, it's, it's it, just an attachment. You attach, instead of a pontic, you attach a, a, a partial denture to it. And this is relatively inexpensive, and it's a good service you know, to have for, for the patient. And you can take that to even the next level, is to do uh, stabilization of, of, of uh, dentures, where you can have two little connectors female parts go in the denture, snaps on, and you have a, a, a good result in the end. So from one to two, to holding in partials, to holding in dentures, and the next step would be to do four, where you even have more stability of the denture, but it's only a stabilizing anchor. That's all an implant is, is something to anchor something else. To the gamut, where you have someone like this, where it's a situation where all the lower teeth were replaced, and this does not come in and out. You can call this a hybrid denture or a, you know, a full arch you know, restoration. Ha has anybody seen a restoration like this in the practice? What's the big issue? I mean, this is great. This is where, where implants started with, is someone's mouthing home care. It's, it's difficult to clean because of the way it's designed. It's a great service for a patient, but when we talk about gingival, uh, maintaining the gingiva and maintaining the implants, as time goes on in the lecture, you'll see that this is one of the trickier ones to keep clean. 